Hello, this is John Whiteley, and this video is about QuickBooks Training Charter Accounts. It's important to identify the key factors before creating your chart of accounts. The setup of the chart of accounts in QuickBooks is very challenging for non-accountants as they do not understand the different terms and relationships of the accounts in a bookkeeping system. Let's take a look at the key considerations. Later in the video, we have included a demonstration on how to add new accounts to your QuickBooks created by QB Learning. It is strongly recommended that you hire the services of a CPA to assist in the creation of your accounts. Watching a 5-10 to 10 minute video cannot teach you all the factors which will affect the names and types of accounts. The chart of accounts is another name for general ledger accounts which hold the monthly summary information for transaction history of your set of books. An accounting system will maintain a general ledger account for each major grouping of assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses. The choice of the number and type of accounts should be determined by the nature of the business, internal control, needed, and tax reporting requirements. Configuring your accounts to perform with your CPA's year-end reporting should save the accountant time and provide room for you to negotiate a lower accounting fee. This benefit should apply to all sizes of business entities. In order to expedite the creation of your charter accounts, consider at least one of the following options. Request the customized chart of accounts listing from your CPA. This is recommended. Request a copy of the working trial balance from your CPA or refer to your year-end financial statements and business tax returns as prepared by your CPA. QuickBooks users sometimes create new accounts with the name of a vendor and post transactions to that account. This is not correct and it appears that the user is confused about the difference between a vendor account and a general ledger account. It is understandable that a user without accounting skills will quite often mess up the chart of accounts, thus the reason to get professional help right from the start. Another consideration when setting up the chart of accounts will be the type of reports needed in the business. The use of the items function in QuickBooks can greatly assist in this area. Watch the following clip on adding new accounts to your general ledger created by QB Learning. If you are unable to get help from your local accountant, then feel welcome to contact John Whiteley at his website, Small Business Navigator. Dot com. In this training, we're going to talk about how to create a new account in your chart of accounts. All right, so I'm going to go into my chart of accounts here. You can see that the chart of accounts is all your different accounts that go into your business. All right, it's not your items that you use, your items that you sell, it's not the services that you produce, services that you purchase. It, these are your accounts that make up your profit and loss statement and your balance sheet. Okay. You have your bank accounts, accounts receivable, other current assets, all these different account types and you can see them here. But how do I create a new one? You come down here under new account or you can push control N all right and you choose which account type do you want to create is it an income or expense account is it a fixed asset account notice also that when you click on each of these different buttons they give you a little summary over here so what is income categorizes money earned what is a loan tracks the principal your business owes for a loan or line of credit then there are also other account types. Some people forget that these are hidden under here. So you have an other asset, 
Again, it gives you some examples of other assets and uh, other income, gives you some examples. But we're just going to go ahead and create a new bank account. Okay. So I'm going to say continue here. Again, I do have the option to change if it's a bank account, asset account, income account. So I do have an option to go back and change this if I want to. So I'm going to go ahead and say payroll checking. If it's a sub account, and in another video we talk about headers and sub accounts. So this is a sub account of cash and cash equivalents, okay, because it is one of the items that are one of the accounts that I want to roll up the balance into cash and cash equivalents. You can put in here a description. Most of the time people use the same description as the account name. It's not a necessary field either. If you are going to do some online banking, connecting with, you can put in here account number, your routing number. Again, this is optional. Then you choose your tax line mapping. What this means is if you use QuickBooks to connect directly to TurboTax, it's going to pull out, oh, cash, this account is a cash account, and which account it should go to on your tax return, which line. If you want to enter your opening balance, you can do that here. I prefer not to enter my opening balance through this way. I prefer to enter it directly in the bank statement and record all, I'm sorry, the bank register and record all of the transactions that happen in the bank. If you want to have a reminder when to order checks, so let's say once you get to check 500, it's time to order, so it'll give you a reminder. And uh, I also, if you want to order checks from QuickBooks, it gives you that option. But let's say we don't want to have this kind of account. We're going to switch it over to an expense account. Different fields come up here, okay? So I'm going to say payroll expenses instead. All right? Again, it's a sub account. Now it can't be a sub account of cash and cash equivalents because that's a bank account. So I have to choose a sub account of something else. All right? I'm going to copy that name, put it in the description. Any special notes here? Now my tax line mapping, I have to decide which tax line it should be associated with and we'll go down here to let's see does it have payroll I can't see it right away compensation so let's put it there and uh, if it's a uh, tracking the ability to track reimbursed expenses and you can choose that here and put it against you know the the income side of it against a different income account Okay, where that's helpful is if this was a direct expense or a cost of goods sold, you can track it on the income and expense side of things. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say save and close, and then we have that new account on our chart of accounts.